Patrick. Thank you, everybody. I, of course, this is a history we all know, but I'm honored to be able to take us through this once more. I, actually, first I want to express my enormous appreciation coming from the world of sort of show business, of all the people who actually put out these pink triangles. It's so thrilling every year to kind of watch it develop on the on the hill and come into play. So thank you all who actually have spread out these claws and made this thing virgin and grow it anew. It's, it's always a thrilling part of the year. Thank you. Of course, the pink triangle was one of the triangles used symbolically by the Nazis to try and dehumanize and categorize shame uh, homosexuals as well as their general program to do the same with so many other people. They were not alone in doing this. Of course, there were similar conceptions of the criminalizing dehumanization of peoples in other countries in Europe around this same time, including uh, Russia and Romania. So and, and these, these, these things sadly still have their vestiges in, in place. Today, on a brilliant day like this, as we see this glorious pink triangle, this seems like nothing but wonderful thing to celebrate, but we must remember that in the 30s and 40s that gays were forced to wear pink triangles on their pockets in concentration camps to identify them as homosexual, to set them even further apart from other prisoners who were there. The triangles of various colors were decreed by the Nazis as various symbols of undesirable people, yellow for Jews, interlocking triangles, making stars, of course, brown for gypsies, red for political prisoners, green for criminals, black for antisocials, purple for Jehovah's Witnesses, blue for immigrants, and of course pink for homosexuals. It is said that the pink triangles were slightly larger than the other triangles so that guards could even more easily identify gay people from a distance, and that the guards often singled out those wearing pink triangles for the absolute harshest treatment, and that even some of those who wore pink triangles were further humiliated by other inmates from other classifications of these same camps. When the war ended and the camps were liberated, almost all prisoners were released except many who wore the pink triangle. Most of those, many of those with a pink triangle on their pockets were put back into prison and the nightmare for them continued even longer. This radiant day also reminds me of a recent experience that I had with my partner Joshua Robeson in Ukraine, where we visited the killing fields Baba Yar, just outside of uh, Kiev. It's the oddest experience because you walk out of the city on a road where all Jews have been rounded up and were taken out of the city on kind of a nice walk until you came to a ravine, and once you went down into this ravine, there was no escape from it. And although we were visiting these, uh, visiting these same steps of families, that it was kind of wintry day, but our guide said, you must remember that it was September, and therefore the most beautiful weather in the Ukraine. It was brilliant, it was sunny, every harvest was coming in, everything was bountiful, and in the midst of all of this, here were all these people being marched step by step to their doom, when in the end there were so many of them clustered there that they had to wait in line, hearing just on the other side of this uh, small hillock the terrible uh, executions that were going on. It's important to know that this same kind of senseless, irrational hatred still haunts the lives of many people today and increasingly those who are being targeted by religious intolerance in many different parts of the world. That's why this display today is so important. It is so important that we as a community remind people that this hatred and prejudice exist, must always be fought, that there will always be those to educate and bring to the message of toleration and respect for all people on the basis of their ethnicity, of their gender, of their, of their sexual identities. So we will never forget these lessons of the past, and I want to again congratulate Patrick and all of you for continuing to make this such a central part of the beginning of
Pride weekend in San Francisco. The whole world knows about it. Thank you again.